Hi, I'm Heather Kahn, and I'm thrilled to have with me today Dr. Terry Moratos Flyer from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, a researcher in the Division of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you for inviting me. Now, your research centers around diabetes and obesity. We obviously have today more knowledge and more at our fingertips about healthy diet, yet we are seeing higher numbers of obesity and near epidemic numbers of type 2 diabetes. So why are we seeing these increases? Sure. So, the, so one of the problems is that as we're getting more knowledge, we also have an environment that has changed dramatically in the last 30 to 50 years. So we have an environment in which food has gotten cheaper and cheaper, and the need to do manual labor has remarkably decreased. So for people who have the predisposition to obesity, there is this incredible food environment out there. Um, it's almost like you know having a person who has a predisposition to being an addict and having you know a huge amount of drugs out there. Mm -hmm. So it becomes really difficult to take what you know, I shouldn't eat this, and actually enact it so that you don't eat it. Um, I think at the same time that there's really not enough understanding and knowledge about what people should be eating and how they should be eating. And another problem is I think some of the professional societies have given us the wrong kind of recommendations. In 1970, the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association started to say you should have a very low fat diet. But what happened is as part of that, people started to eat a lot of carbohydrates uh, and didn't really focus on calorie restriction. So we have knowledge about how things work. We probably have a better understanding of uh, the regulation of energy balance and weight than we ever did. And at the same time, we have an environment that's predisposing to obesity. And we have not very good understanding of how to take what we know and tell you as an individual, this is the way you should eat to try and eat, lose weight. and then maintain your weight. And are you seeing a lot more type 2 diabetes and hearing more about it? Absolutely. Um, type 2 diabetes is directly linked to the problem of obesity and probably 80 to 90 percent of people with type 2 diabetes are either overweight or obese. So as people gain weight, um, they be develop type 2 diabetes. At the same time, we have a, a, an increase in the number of teenagers and young adults who are obese and for the first time we are seeing this population develop type 2 diabetes. So why is it so hard for us to control ourselves? Why do we eat what we eat? And why do certain people, I know me, for example, I crave the carbs and crave the sweets, some people don't. What's at work there? So probably, and this is a theory, we still don't fully understand this, um, mammals, humans, dogs, cats, are designed to store energy. And they're designed to store energy because there will be times when you're um, don't have any energy available. So a famine um, a thousand years ago, the person who would survive the famine was the uh, person that had those few extra calories so that a few weeks survival before the harvest came in, uh, would that person would have a great advantage. So we're designed to store calories and uh, part of that is to crave certain kinds of foods that are gonna be good for calorie storage. Uh, carbohydrates are actually great at that. Uh, you, you have a carb and uh, you increase insulin and insulin is the best um, anabolic hormone, it builds up fat, and uh, so the calories that you uh, ingested uh, go into your hips, thighs, uh, abdomen as extra fat. Tell me about the findings of your specific studies on low carb and high carb diets. We decided to do a study in mice on an Atkins style diet, a very low carbohydrate high fat diet. And the reason we decided to do it is in part no one had ever done it before. No one had actually tested, you know, there are these claims that uh, a very low carbohydrate diet will change your metabolism and get you to lose more weight. And mice are a great model. We've discovered a lot in mice that applies to humans in terms of the hormones that regulate weight and the genetics of obesity. So we said, okay, let's try this diet in mice. And um, amazingly enough, because if I had bet I would have bet against it. Right. If you feed mice this diet, they actually increase their metabolism, and that is how they uh, both um, lose weight and maintain the weight loss. So in fact, what it taught me is that different diets will have different effects on metabolism. 
Uh, it also taught me, because we looked at this diet over a couple of different strains of mice, that the response also depends on the genetics of the mouse. So some mice will have more of a response, and some mice will have res less of a response. So part of that story is that for any given individual, you have to individualize the diet. Just like there's personalized medicine, what's the best blood pressure medication for you? Or if someone has a certain kind of cancer, what's the best treatment for that cancer? Uh, when it comes to diet, there's no one right diet. It's what's the right diet? for this person. What's going to work for them? That was your study in mice. What do you recommend for people? It's an individualized prescription, but in general what I recommend is a relatively uh, low carbohydrate diet in the sense that you uh, don't have pasta. If you're trying to diet, pasta, potatoes, rice, um, kind of all the white and yellow foods are not going to be really helpful in, in, in that diet. The kinds of carbs you have are the complex carbs, and uh, you focus a lot on things like your mother told you, like green vegetables. Uh, uh, they're great. Uh, meat in, in reasonable amounts, and again, if you happen to like fish, you're lucky because it's a great diet food. Um, you know, chicken is better, uh, but kind of, it's really kind of what most mothers said you right. should you know eat your veggies and have a reasonable amount of meat and don't have a lot of that pasta stuff. Great information. Dr. Terry Morato's flyer, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here.